Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to continue the question that we started earlier in the previous video about the calculation of ultimate load on a beam which was uh, under distributed load on its half. And we are going to cross check our calculation with the software, in this case, RFM from the Lowell. Now, first, we need to create a new model. Select the name, indeterminate beam, ultimate load, and what you need from adds on with uh, as far as we are going to have nonlinear material, you need to have this uh, option available. And also, usually, I use uh, upward to be positive. First of all, we need to define a material. We can open the material and just copy a new material. We can change the name, for example, SY equals to 250 megapascal, just to remember. And from here, you can select classic member, user defined material, and then you can use bilinear, which the EP is set to be zero and 250 megapascal FY. Here also you can change the FY as far as this is a manual material. And then that's all. We can close this part. We can go to the section and we can define a new section from here. It's a massive with the width of 50 and 120 millimeter. The material is going to be SY250. Everything else looks to be fine. And then it was 10 meters beam. From here, we can select the cross section that we are using. And for both ends, we can use the rigid supports. However, as far as a Rigid supports might be a little bit controversial because if they are infinity rigid, then they would not be completely plastic. As a result, we have something also to set here for the support. We can select all of these are completely fixed and for Y we can assume that it's a with a partial activity. For this option also I have a playlist for the uh, partially rigid supports that you can have a look. Uh, plenty of uh, information how to calculate uh, the rigidity or a stiffness of a connection. So it is a yielding from support when the moment reaches to, if you remember, it was 45 kilonewton meter. So here in the graph, we can see that in the positive and negative, it, if the bending moment reaches to 45 kilonewton meter, then it's completely free to rotate. Also, as far as half of the beam is going to be under the load, I prefer to divide this member to two elements. So one intersection and also we need a load. Ultimate load and I do not activate the self rate as far as I'm going to check my solution. In my solution, we didn't consider the self rate. Then we applied the load. If you remember, the value was 12.8 minus 12.8. And we apply it to this half of the beam. It looks good. I can increase the size of these two supports. As far as they are partial active uh, supports, they are not green like other uh, ordinary sections. So what you need, just run it and check the results. Here you can see the displacement as far as this 12.8 is exactly the value of becoming completely mechanism. You can see that the deformation is quite significant. 
and there might be some kind of error or warning so here we can see some errors and warnings uh, occur during the calculation please check the table with errors and warning for more details uh, if you look at the information here you can see that how it looks like if we go through the internal forces we can see that exactly 45 45 and here something very close to 45 if you want to see more details you can come to member result diagrams and i can just turn off these two here you can see that this is happening in 3.5 meters however we calculated it should be in the 75% of L, which is 3.75. The main reason is that the mesh by default of this application is set to be half meters. As a result, you might see that these two values are very close to each other. But if you want to see exactly this happens to in 3.75, meaning that we need to have very a small mesh, like here 0 0.05 meters or 50 millimeters to do so you can come to calculate and for mesh setting the first option is the size and here instead of half meter i will go with five centimeter and we can run it one more time the results might be a little bit different because now each element is five centimeter instead of half meter it was about 400 millimeter earlier and now this time it should be a little bit different let's check here this is 380 90 now it's done again the same warning here we can see that these are almost like 145 kilonewton per meter and let's check this time what the distance is here we can see that it's exactly 3.75 meters which we calculated earlier and that's all how to calculate the failure load or failure moment of a cross section of a simple beam and that's the end of this video that's the end of this video i hope uh, it was informative and you got the idea how to model and how to find out the failure of a beam we cross-checked the hand calculation with rfm from the global thank you for watching see you next time bye